In this video, we're going to take a look at using a PBR substance material here within Unity. So I have my scene set up and I'm going to just import in the substance material. So I'll import the new asset and here I'm going to choose this rocks, dirt, ground, SBS AR file. And so I'll click import and Unity has imported in the substance for me. So here you'll notice that I have the substance and right below this a material has been created for me. If I take a look at this material, you'll notice that the shader has been set to standard and all of the maps have been hooked up in the appropriate channels. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, Unity uses a specific implementation in how they pack channels. Well, the Substance plugin will take care of all of that for you. So if you create a substance in Substance Designer and you just use the Metal Rough workflow, the Substance plugin will automatically pack the channels as well as invert the roughness to glossiness. So you don't have to do any extra work in your Substance material itself. The plugin will take care of all that for you. So for example, if we take a look here at the metallic texture that was generated by the substance, you can see that, well, it's black because there's no metallic in this material. However, if I view the alpha information, I can now see that I have the smoothness map placed in the alpha channel. Again, it's just an invert of the roughness map that I actually created in Substance Designer. So now I can just take the material and I can just drag and drop it here into an asset in my scene. And so now I have the substance material applied. Now, just as we covered in the previous video, I have my environment set up. I also have my reflection probe here set to encompass this plane that I'm working with. So here, we'll go back to that material and we can take a look at some of the options. So let's just say that I want to tile this material. This is a tileable substance and I'm going to tile it. Well, I can come over here to the tiling section and I can just adjust the X and Y value and it's going to tile all of the maps for me, just as you would normally work with the standard shader in Unity. So for instance, let's just tile this twice. So I'll put a two here and you can see that the substance material has been tiled. Now, since I have a height map, I actually have the ability to adjust the parallax option here. So let's just increase this value and you can see here that we start to get the appearance or the illusion of a little bit of extra depth as driven by our height map. Now also here in the inspector, if we scroll all the way down, you'll notice that underneath procedural properties, we have properties for the substance. So any substance that you use that has parameters that allow you to change the substance, those will be available to you here. If you have a substance that utilizes outputs that are additional to what the shader utilizes, you can actually click this generate all outputs button and it will generate all of the outputs that you have in your substance material. Here we have the option which is enabled by default to generate MIP maps. Now, as I said, I have these parameters. Now in this particular substance, which we're gonna be covering in this series on how I created this, I have these parameters that I can change. So for instance, let's say that I want to remove the puddles here. So I'm just gonna take the puddles slider and I'm gonna drop this down. And here you can see that I've removed the puddles. Now in this case, I have this dirt and rocks. Let's add some of this uh, effect here. So I'm gonna to start to just increase this value and I'm just interactively working with the substance parameters to change the texture. Also, the substances being procedural can be driven by this random seed. So if I just click this randomize button, the texture itself will become randomized. This is really good if you need to duplicate and utilize the material on different assets. So here I've removed my dirt and rocks and I'm going to just make a few more changes. Let's take this rock pattern, let's set this to pattern two and here for my uh, rock striation, I'm going to just uh, adjust this slider here. And so now I get a, a completely different rock material than what we started with. And that's the true power of utilizing a substance here within Unity. I can even change my striation angle. And as you'll see, as we start to work through this course, we're going to utilize this single substance material to texture our ground with puddles and rock, as well as cliffs and larger rocks, utilizing these parameters to generate a completely different rock material for us. Now, as I said, the substance is going to handle all of the packing of the textures for us. And here underneath generated textures, you can see where we can click these buttons here and we can change how these maps are packed. So in the case of our metallic texture here, you can see that the smoothness channel is being placed into the alpha of the metallic map. 
When we see an option here that's set to source A, this just means use the source's own alpha channel. We're not going to change anything. So here you can see for my height map and my occlusion map, we're just using the source alpha channel if there is one available. However, for our metallic map, again, we're using the smoothness in the alpha. And here for our albedo, any opacity information that we have, we're placing that in the alpha as well. Here towards the bottom, you can see that we have the ability to change the target width and height. So substances being procedural can be dynamic as well. So notice that at this time, I'm just using a 512 texture. But if I wanted to, I could regenerate this texture here at a 1K resolution or a 2K. So now that I have this set, I'll click apply. And now the substance engine is going to regenerate these textures to be 1K in resolution. Here under format, we have the option to work with our compression. And then finally, we have our load behavior options. The do nothing option will not generate textures. You then need to call rebuild textures or rebuild textures immediately from code to generate the substance textures. Do nothing and cache, again, this will not generate the textures. Rebuild textures or rebuild textures immediately must be called to generate the textures. However, after the textures have been generated for the first time, they are cached to disk to speed up subsequent game and application startups. Here we have build on level load, which is enabled by default. This will generate textures when loading to favor the application size. This is the default option. And then we have a variation of this, which is build on level load, which again is just going to, on level load, it's going to generate the textures. However, on that first level load, it's going to also cache those textures to disk. So again, subsequent game startups and application startups are going to be much faster. Now we have these options for baking. So bake and keep a substance. This means that the textures will be baked to speed up loading and it will keep the procedural material data so that it can still be tweaked and regenerated later on. So again, we're gonna bake these textures, speed things up. We're still gonna have the ability to change our substance parameters. If we have an option here for bake and discard, it's going to bake the textures again to speed up the loading, but it's going to discard the procedural material data. So this is basically just going to give you some textures. It's going to remove the procedural material link and you'll have no ability to change any of these substance parameters. Now this is at runtime during the game. Which brings me to uh, an important point is that with a substance material, we are generating these textures. So the true benefit is these textures don't actually exist until runtime. So this means that the overall binary size of your packaged game or application can be rather small if you're using all substance procedural materials. However, once the textures themselves are generated, they are going to take up texture RAM just as any standard texture would. So now let's take a look at how we can duplicate substances. So here, let's just take this plane that we have and I'm just going to uh, duplicate it and we'll just move it out of the way here. And uh, so now we have two planes to work with. And let's go back to our substance. So here I'm selecting the actual substance item. And here at the top of the inspector, we have these controls for duplicating and removing materials. So if I want to take what I have here so far, so we've already made some substance changes and I just wanna duplicate this, I can hit this duplicate button and a new material has been created for me and it's based on all of the same parameters that I've already set up. So here we'll go back to the substance and let's say that I want to create a completely new substance. So I no longer want or care to use this substance. So I'm going to hit this uh, minus or subtract button to remove it. And with this guy selected, I'm going to hit the plus button and this is going to generate a new substance for me. Now notice this is using the default parameters from the substance itself. So here I'm going to come into uh, this substance and let's take this rock ground one and let's place it here onto this plane. So now I'm utilizing the same substance, but using two different material variations of that substance. And again, I can come in and just set up uh, what I want to work with. So my tiling and so on. Maybe I'll add some dirt and rocks to this. Actually, let me adjust my tiling here in the appropriate section. I actually did that here in the secondary maps. So here you can see that, you know, I have this in place. And like I said, we're going to just going to add in some dirt and rocks to this and maybe just take our puddles down. And so here utilizing that same substance, you can see that I get to completely two different material variations of that. And we can control that here just by utilizing or working with the substance item itself here in the inspector. 
So we also have just a few more options. So let's say that you know I have this substance selected, and substance materials are used in a wide range of applications. So there's other game engines you can use them with. Also, uh, they're natively supported in most 3D applications, such as Maya, Max, Moto, Cinema 4D, and so on. And let's say that you know I'm working uh, with a material here, and I've set this up, these parameters up, and I'd like to be able to export a preset of this that I can then load uh, within Substance Designer or Substance Player. So I can do that by just clicking this button here and I can export a preset. I can also have the options to come in and take the textures that I have and export them as bitmaps. So I have two options, export bitmaps, remapped alpha channels. So again, remember that we've actually used the subs or the substance plugin actually remapped uh, some of these channels for us. Uh, here again, taking the smoothness and placing it into the alpha of the metallic. If I want to keep that set up, I can choose the option here. Let me select it. Uh, choose the option here for remapped alpha channels. If I just want to export with the original alpha channels, just export the textures, I can use this option here. So that's just a quick way to use Unity to create the substance uh, and then quickly just export out some textures that I can use elsewhere if needed. So I'd also like to mention that the procedural material can be completely scripted within Unity scripting API. So we have full access to substance parameters and, and different variables. So here I'm looking at the Unity documentation and you can see an example script uh, that you might use to generate substance textures and control them through code. Now we're not going to cover that here in this courseware, but in another advanced course, we'll take a look at being able to work with substances using scripts within Unity. So here I'll just scroll down. You can see that you have the ability to do some things that you can't do in the editor, such as set the cache size. This sets uh, the procedural cache budget. You can also check to see if the substance engine is processing. Uh, you can clear cache, generate textures, and so on. Also, all the parameters that you have in your substance, you can access those in code. Another good option to that is just to utilize this random seed. So maybe when the level starts up in code, you trigger the random seed so that each time the game starts up, it's going to just slightly randomize the texture so the world looks different every time you start up the game. So as you can see, working with Substance Materials here in Unity is very easy. There's a lot of flexibility in the ability to work with Substance parameters to dynamically change textures. And the Substance format itself provides a perfect solution as a container for PBR assets that you're going to use in your game. Again, utilizing a Substance that's completely procedural the size of this asset that takes up in your, in your project itself is extremely low. For example, you can see here that this rock dirt ground substance that we're using is only 48 kilobytes. And with this substance, we can have the engine call to generate all of these textures for us, and especially if we're using different variations on these materials. So again, I have this single 48 kilobyte asset that's allowing me to generate these two different materials, but these textures don't exist until they're called to be generated at runtime, which makes the overall binary size of my application much smaller. Typically in games, texture assets take up a whole lot of space, and you can see where Substance provides an excellent solution to this, especially on mobile platforms.